Thank you for attending another one of our facility services workshop. We have um, done a few of these, so, well, this is our third, so you can keep your eyes open in the Tennessee today for advertisements of the different workshops that we're, we're having. But we thank you for being here today. And the workshop today, uh, Professional Tips for the Interior Painter, is presented by Bill Mills of the Paint and Sign Services. And Bill is a senior painter um, in facility services. And uh, whenever his supervisor is not around, he also steps into the supervisory role. He came to the University of Tennessee in 1995 as a carpenter. And during his time in carpentry services or building finishes as you know them, Bill has served in many areas, including doing masonry work, carpentry, furniture finishing, drywall finishing, and others. Some of them, too many to name. But in 2007, he moved to paint and sign services as a painter, and eight years later, he is one of our experts in painting. In his spare time, Bill loves to fish, he hikes, and he loves to cook. And in fact, he has two Pinterest accounts showing all his yeah. cooking Ooh. skills and his right. painting skills. I need to start knowing this. I know. Tweet that to me today. Yeah. He is an active member of, also of his church and can be found on Sunday mornings teaching Sunday school. Today, he's going to be assisted by Ron Couch, who is, is the supervisor in paint and sign services. And so, ladies and gentlemen, help me to welcome Mr. Bill Mills. Hi, I'm glad y'all came out today and uh, to support us in this workshop. And we'll do our best uh, to teach you some techniques and some things about painting that maybe you just didn't know and that will help you to paint at home and uh, give, you, give you just a little better insight on it. Our uh, workshop today on uh, uh, Pre-painting preparation and, and paint uh, cleanup, that's our uh, outline today that I'd like to teach you all. And uh, what is pre-painting preparation include? It's uh, patching, cover-up, and when I say cover-up, I'll get to that in a minute with all of our stain blockers and things of that nature. Taping, types of brushes and walls that you might encounter in your home uh, to paint. Uh, we built some little dummy walls here to kind of give you a better, I always feel like it's, it's you're better off. If I can see it, I understand what you're talking about more than just telling you about it. So a little hands-on stuff. Uh, what we have here is a, just a, a basic sheetrock wall. And if y'all are kind of like my wife, she loves hanging pictures and <laughs> driving all kind of nails in the wall and, and hangers. And I got to go through and pull all those out. And, here at the university, we run into a lot of these. You, a lot of people don't use these at home. Some of you may. And they leave kind of a really bad hole yeah. in the sheetrock. And when we, we approach those, we're like, you know, that, that's going to be a problem to, to really work on. My, my suggestion with these is when you, when you have a hole like that, you see how fuzzy that is, you just can't mud over that. That paper's just going to keep walking back with you. So take something like your putty knife or something like that, and if you'll round that edge, see how much cleaner that edge is, and then you can take and, and round those edges, take that excess paper off, that thing will mud. It'll mud right up to me. And I have a little bit of just a all-purpose joint compound that you can buy at your Lowe's, local hardware store. You don't have to buy a five-gallon bucket. <laughs> Probably go bad on you. But they'll come in gallon buckets and get something like that but then that just gives you just a little little better and see how smooth that that turns out now you'll go back let that dry it'll sink in a little bit with you come back just give it a second coat you can lightly sand that you end up with a, a beautiful wall i draw this this is a stress crack some of our older homes we're going to have stress cracks and things of that nature we start this project with all of our patching and, and you know, you can't start painting. Uh, your, your paint job is going to be as good as your patch job is. And if you just half patch it and just jump into it, you're not going to end up with good results. So my thing is I like to really 
be able to see D about it and really get it right the first time. So some of these stress cracks, if they're not really bad in your home, I would just cop those, kind of smooth it down with a putty knife and a little soup, take a wet rag and just kind of wipe all of that and it'll take all that residue off, make a good clean edge. But when we get into those really big ones, I take a utility knife and I'll just cut kind of like a V in that thing. Just follow that crack all the way down, cut a V, cut that crack out a little bit, give myself a little bit of, get rid of all that bad edge that's in there. And then I'll come back after I've cut that crack out. And then I will finish that edge up and I end up with a, with a good product, you know, that I'm proud of, a good, good clean edge that I can work with and, and prime. Now, some of your bigger holes, maybe the kids have thrown the door in and knocked the hole in with the doorknob. There's neat products out now that we can, we can use to, to eliminate those holes. I did one here just for an example. This is what it'll look like when you get done. And you can sand that, and, and I'll show you in a few minutes when we get on into to the rest of this. But these are neat little patches. They have a little piece of metal in them with a little sticky back mesh tape on the back of them. Let me get my hands free where I can show you this. And this mesh tape that's on these is self adhesive. So We'll just take that, just center that up with your, your hole there that you want to patch. Just kind of rub it down there. Can you sand it Lowe's or Home Depot too? Yes, you can pick these up. Now if we get real creative and we get to jumping on the bed, they even have them the size of a small child's boot. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we need to patch those, you know. They get to jumping on the bed or, and I can talk to some lady here the other the other day, she said her sister fell down the steps and stuck her head through the wall. Oh, no. Probably wouldn't patch my head, but maybe a, somebody a little smaller. But and and what we do with this, we'll we'll go in. We run into these a lot here at campus. Some of these kids they'll really let the door fly when they leave. But if you're just taking put your your joint compound over that, and you're not going to cover this the first first time. This usually takes about three applications to really make it look nice, but pull it down real nice like that. And you know what I like to do? I like to go back, and we have several different knives, and you can buy these. This is more expensive. This is professional grade stainless steel paint, but you, you've seen the little red plastic ones at Lowe's. They work just as good. All you need is a trough to hold your mud. You can pick these up fairly reasonable, up to four to five dollars. And after you patch that, what you want to do, let that dry, and then come back over it with even a wider knife. And see, that allows you to feather out those edges, pull it in here and feather your edges down, lightly sand that, and it'll, this is what I did to this. And you can fill these edges after the class, and they're pretty smooth. But, now, as we all know, you need a good caulk gun, so, I'd invest in, you know, they have these fairly reasonable, I think, seven, eight dollars. And you pick these up to, to caulk any type of holes you may have. But, and this also is about what, five dollars a bag at uh, Lowe's Home Depot. Now, this is quick setting. They have different types. This is 45 minute, it's supposed to dry hard. They have it five minute, they have it 20 minute. But you know, this. Ladies, I'll just put it like this. You put it in a pan. You want it about the same consistency as that. And what I do is add just a little bit of water, mix it up, about like you're mixing cake batter, cornbread, and you get it to about this consistency. You can smear it on just like that. It dries. It, it dries pretty quick if you're in a rush. <clears throat> but most of our cleanups, we're talking about patching and Get rid of all these holes. I have, I have some stuff right here. The same stuff that they're showing in this uh, bottom picture here. This mash tape. You pick that up yourself. It's it's just like our little patch was. It's sticky on the back, and you can put that over those those cracks, some of the wider places, mud them in. 
really works great. And, and I really recommend that for, for patching various spots. But your prep work, I can't stress it enough uh, how important it is to get, get it right. And all these, these patches that I've showed you here, when they dry, I'm going to come back. And there's various types of these. They're called sanding sponges. Uh, one side of this one's coarse, a little finer on this side, and uh, or medium. It's a it's a coarse to medium. And this one is considered a fine uh, sandpaper. This fine will do. It'll sand it, it, any of these that that I want to sand. You know, to uh, and just basically what the way I do this, I work on the, the edge of it a little bit here, come across the middle. And it's all hands on. If I want to feel that, I don't I don't feel any humps, I don't feel any bumps, I'm good to go. Then, before I can finish that, I need a good cover up. And as you see in the picture up here where the vents are, now those are water stains. What you're gonna to have to have on water stains is a good oil base cover up. And you want a good old base uh, stain blocker and not promoting any, it, it, you can buy it in a spray can. You got small areas, or you can buy it by the gallon. You can buy it by five gallon, but I don't think you're gonna have to go that far. <laughs> on crayon, permanent marker, things of this nature, you're gonna want a good old base type to cover it up because you know what? Those are gonna keep bleeding through and keep bleeding through. If you try to paint over those, you'll never cover them. And you'll need a good oil base cover up for those type jobs. Now, this on the end, it's a latex uh, primer, we call it. It's not a stain blocker, it's a primer. But what I do with primer, after I sanded uh, my area, I want to prime that area and, and cover it good with a good primer. But one other suggestion I have, a little trick of the trade, after that primer dries, I like to go back with the wall color that I'm going to paint this, and I want to prime it again with that wall color and let it dry before I cut it in and roll it out. Actually, I'm giving it an extra coat, but it will hide uh, the area that I want to cover. Do you see this area up here in the top corner of this guy's stretching of that? He's painted that with no primer. And so you'll not hide that patch where it was patched because it'll keep sucking the paint up and and he didn't, didn't prime it. Now, brushes are very important. We'll get to those in just a minute. And it's very important to, to pick the right paint for the job. You know, and, and, and this door on the bottom right-hand side, what has happened there is someone came along and painted latex paint over oil. Now, you may not know this, but you uh, latex will not. Uh, grab into oil-based paint. After a while, it'll hold on there the first couple of coats, but then after a while, it starts letting go. Yeah? If it's already on the wall, how can you tell the difference? Possibly if it's latex. Good question. Take you some denatured alcohol mm -hmm. on a rag, and if it's latex paint on your baseboard or on your wall, whatever you're doing, just rub a little spot. And if that paint comes off on that rag, it's latex. But if it's oil-based paint, won't touch it. It'll it'll just uh, clean it up good for you. But uh, that's that's the way to tell. See, they they painted that door there with the uh, latex. Now you can you can paint latex over oil, but there's preparation that's got to take place. You need to lightly sand that area. Take your good old base stain blocker, paint that door with it, let it dry, come back, put your paint on, and it'll stay. Different types of tape. We use this tape a lot, but we pull this tape a lot because you can't leave this tape on for a long period of time. It'll damage your woodwork. It'll pull off, you know, paint. It's got good adhesive on the back of it. I would recommend for the household just some good old blue painter's tape because it's, it, it'll seal for you, it, it, and it's easy to peel back off. You can put it on sensitive surfaces without doing any damage. They'll keep it down to a minimum, you know, if any at all. And 
this is a really good product. Uh, you want to clean up, it's goof off. You get to get paint out of the carpet with it, you drop your, your paint, but I recommend you paint and keep a wet rag with you. To clean up those little spots immediately. Uh, latex can clean it right out of the carpet, but this uh, is good stuff. Uh, how many of you uses the double back sticky tape? And they'll put that on the wall. Well, when you pull it off, it, it leaves a lot behind. Sometimes it takes part of the wall out and we have to kind of cut out around it and patch that place. But this is excellent for taking glue, paint on the baseboard you don't want on there. This is great for, for cleanup. Uh, goof off and things of that nature. All right, before we can tape, there's a little bit of prep work needs to take place. And uh, hopefully I can teach you a little something here today about that. You see up here in the top corner how he's cleaning the base? Uh, I don't care how good a housekeeper you are, you're still going to gather dust bunnies behind the couch and stuff on the, on the baseboard. So we need to go through there with a damp cloth and clean those baseboards good so our tape will stick to it. And uh, so he's cleaning the base off, getting it ready. And top right hand corner, he's keeping that tape good and straight. You want a good straight tape line? Uh, try your best not to get way up on the wall, especially if you're changing colors uh, on the wall. Because if you do, when you pull that tape, guess what? The old color's still there. You got to come back and try to cut all that in. And but what I would recommend is try to keep it just as straight as you can keep it there on the on the baseboard and. And here's a, here's a little trick that a lot of people don't know. You see this one here? Do you see where this guy's hand is and how he's pulling down? When you remove that tape, always pull down from here and pull it away from the, the wall down. Because if you try to pull up on that tape, if I stand here, if I get lazy and I say, I'm just going to pull it out that way, guess what? Sometimes it'll grab the edge of that paint, rip a big place in my paint job. So there's little, little tricks to to all that, just kind of pull it down away from the, the wall and and then there won't be no accidents. As we get on into our uh, brushes and our latex and oil, uh, there's, a, there's a big difference there. And uh, talks about brushes versus rollers. Uh, when am I gonna need those? Well, if I'm gonna paint this wall, I'm not gonna wanna brush the whole thing. I'm not gonna wanna brush the whole living room. So I'm going to want to pick me a, a good brush. I'm going to want to cut this in to my, my trim. And I'm going to want to do some prep work here and, and, and tape anything that I don't want to get paint on. But as much as we paint, we normally I'll carry a wet rag in case I make a, a bad stroke and hit the trim. I can wipe it immediately off and it'll come right off. But how, how do I know what brush? If it's oil-based, you need a thinner rag. Yeah, that's good. If you're doing your, your baseboard, we'll, we'll get into those. Uh, latex, it's a water cleanup. And I'll tell you a little rule of thumb about that. Usually if you turn that can around and you read on the back, and it, whatever it says to clean it up with, that's usually what will thin that too. Like with latex, if I want to thin it, I'll just add a little water in it. Stir it up, thins it right down. But it'll also clean it up. And with oil-based paints, thinner. The good old paint thinner, mineral spirits, will clean it, uh, clean it up in a hurry. And I'll usually, if we're painting oil here at work, painting frames or anything like that, y'all come by us and we smell funny, we've got thinner on a rag and, and we're ready to get it off the floor or anywhere it may drip. You know, and, but as far as uh, latex, you're going to want to paint most of your walls in your house latex. I wouldn't recommend painting them with uh, oil, but there's a there's a different types of brushes. We have uh, this is I'm not promoting any name brands now. I'll just tell you these are good uh, good brushes that we brought today to show you. They're similar to the brushes that you got here today. Those are awesome little brushes, by the way, that y'all have. You'll really, you'll really like that brush. And you have brushes that have china bristles in them, uh, which those white china bristles are for oil. They're recommended for an oil-based paint. 
your nylon brushes like you have in your hand, that's a latex brush. That's to paint your wall at home, your bathroom. That's a good, good latex brush. And if you take care of that brush, it'll last you a long time. And we'll get to that area in just a little bit how to how to take care of that. But as far as uh, brushes versus rollers, uh, there's all types of rollers. You say, well, how do I know what what roller nap? This is a roller nap. This is a roller frame. But uh, some of the things that I know you're going to be familiar with, most everybody as a homeowner has one of these. Yeah. At some point in time, we've got one of them. The little metal ones, I always like picking them up like this and all my paint just, okay. you know, and I'm like, wow, how did I do that? So I pick it up again like that. <laughs> and these are pretty common. I don't recommend them. And I'll tell you why. That costs probably four to five dollars. I can buy a bucket at Lowe's for two dollars. A good bucket that will set up. I can put plenty of paint in it. I don't have to keep filling that little flimsy pan. And I can buy one of these good, it's bucket screen, bucket grid. I call them grids. They're screens to roll my paint roller on to get all the, the paint off of it. And guess what, guys? If I get tired and I want to go to bed, I take me a garbage bag, put right over the top of this, kind of tie it up a little bit, go to bed, get up the next morning, my paint's as fresh as it was the day I started painting with it. You can leave your brush in there? Yep. Oh. I'll tell you a secret. I, I painted the shutters at home, and what I did, it just clouded up and started to rain, so I had to stop. I didn't want to get in the middle of a shutter and it rain on me. So I took it and put it in a baggie, rolled it up, put it in the refrigerator, and it stayed for a week like that. My wife said, you still like a shutter? I said, I know, I get it. <laughs> but, you know, it's sort of rule of thumb. Painter's house needs to be painted, and mechanic's car needs to be fixed. That's just the, the way it goes. And, but we have so many products on the market today. Now, we call these, these are mini coders. These are little bitty rollers, and, and you may not be familiar with them, but you should get familiar with them. It's called a mini coder, and I'll tell you what, I wouldn't want to go on a job without one, because there's so many times I get in those small areas, especially at home, behind the commode, the sink, you can just whiz that right in there, and it covers so good. These are something that you're probably not much familiar with. These are called strainer bags. Now, we take these strainer bags. This is for a gallon bucket. Uh, have you ever just stored the paint out in the garage or somewhere and then go to pour it up and it's all clabbered and bad? These are perfect for straining. Just, just put this over your gallon bucket, pour your paint in there. Just kind of pull it up out of there and let it drain good. You can reach these out and use them over and over but it catches all the trash, all the bad stuff in your paint, and you got a smooth, smooth run of paint. And they come for five gallon, gallon buckets, and just an all good purpose. And you can really get bored as a great mosquito net. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just one of the all purpose things. You just gotta use your imagination. Uh, all types of rubber handles. Most of us, we have a wooden screw-in type handle and we'll use that why they're three dollars you know I'm not going to paint the rest of my life I just need a three dollar handle which works perfect you can get those in different sizes and not just saw them off for too long in the room and these we we use a lot of these I carry this in my paint bag it's just in some of these offices we go in we have to move the furniture to the middle and I've got about that much room to rub so I need something short to to get around in there okay cutting in Spreading and rolling. How wet should my brush be? Okay, good question. Now, I've got some paint poured up here to show you this. Um, did you know if you dry roll a wall, it'll let you know it. Have you ever been rolling and your roller just go? Well, there's no paint in that roller, and you're just going through the motion. Uh, that, that roller should make a whole lot of noise. If you've, and, and I'll really rope those things down. And 
And it ought to stay fluffy like that the whole time I'm painting. If I've rolled it down and it keeps getting littler and littler, guess what? I'm drying it out. It's running out of paint. I need to load it back up again. People will say, well, how, how much paint should I, should I have in my brush, in my bucket? You know, I want mine to have some paint on it. And a lot of people, after they load that brush up like that, they'll stand there and go. Yeah. <laughs> Guess what I'm doing? All the paint's back in my bucket again. And, and I see people, they're, they're a fanatic, they go, and they just really work on that. And I'm like, you know, there's no paint on that anymore. But what we do, I'll pick that thing up, give it a good few, and there you go. Just against it. You know there's a right way. This handle back here is just for dipping it. If you want control over that brush, you catch it up like this. Hold it up here. And when you're painting, don't go in against your trim with that loaded brush. Start out down here. See how I start out here? And then I take the tip of that brush and I just watch it and follow right along. But I want to smooth this edge out because I don't want to live on it. I want to smooth it out to where I can I can paint. But when I come back to roll, that's all going to blend together. Good angle brush. If you're not a professional painter, because this is the heel. Let me put this down. This is the heel, and that's the tip. And when I'm reaching into reaching into corners with this thing, if I'm not used to painting, I'll start out down here and I'll push that up in that corner, pull it away, come across here, smooth out those edges. And did you know I can stop the flow of the paint in this brush? I sure can. That brush needs to, you just let that brush do the work. If you were standing up here where I'm standing, you can see the paint crawling out of these bristles that way onto the wall. But if I push down hard on that brush, I cut the paint off of it. It will not flow and it'll start dragging. But if I just ease up on it, that paint will just roll out about the same principle as a fountain pen. You know how that, that ball in that fountain pen rolls? And that, that ink will roll right out on the paper. Well, that paint will roll right out on this wall for you if you'll just let it. Just keep it good. See how much paint I got on that? Got a lot of paint on that, don't I? Yeah. Well, I want to paint this wall. <laughs> you know? And I want to really put that paint on there. I want to just um, smooth it out, you know? And pull those edges down. And see, I'm not under a lot of pressure here, am I? <laughs> okay? And I want to pull those edges. I want to put that brush in there like that. Pull those edges like that there. Get my edges cut in good all the way around. Then I'm ready to roll them along. Once we get all that, that cut in, get our, our cut in done, we're ready to roll some paint on. And that's basically, you know, and if you'll, if you'll practice and just take your time, you'll be able to get some paint on the wall. <laughs> But we'll load a quiche on my head of you again. Yeah, just Rolling and how wet should I have that brush? I showed you that. Okay. Now, by the way, I thank all the ladies that put all this hard work into this, that this would come together as easy as it has for me. Now, that there's a lot of paint in there. And you say, well, how should I roll? Have you ever, have you ever tried to roll and you get all these lines? Yes. Mm -hmm. Rolling too hard. <laughs> Rolling way too hard. Okay, I can I can hold that thing just like that and roll this whole wall. You see how that's it? Just turn it over, and I'll. You say, well, where do I start at? Well, this wall's not eight foot, so I'm just going. And you see how my 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 roller? Look at that. No pressure. You see how much paint I'm putting on that wall? I'm not. There's no pressure at all on that. And you hardly hear that, and guess what? I'm there, 
I want more paint in the thing. There's plenty of paint in it. If I really want to squeeze it, I can turn this wall over. But make sure I get all that off. Pull that thing up out of there. See that? All right, we've covered a wall today. We've painted a wall. And see how, and you know what I like to do? I like the back row. And when I say back row, this is what I'm doing. I'm laying it down. I let, it, let my paint just lay it down on the wall. That kind of gives me about a coat and a half if I do that. And I cover that up. Well, you can see the difference in the product. How do you know what kind of paint you want? There's all different kinds of sheens. We've got semi-gloss, we've got satin, we've got eggshell, we've got flat. I'm using flat today. Flat is a very forgiving paint. It'll hide a lot of stuff. But if I drop something that splashes on this, I can't wipe it off. Because it'll mess my paint job up if I go scrubbing on flat paint. We use a lot of eggshell here at, at, at uh, UT. My favorite of all is satin. Satin, I can clean it off, and it, it really looks good. I just like, that's my preference. I like satin. Now, semi-gloss. Semi-gloss paint is pretty, has a nice shine. It's easy to clean up, but it shows a lot of flaws. It'll show if your walls are not even, that semi-gloss paint's going to tell it. It's going to mirror it. Every reflection you're going to see. Why? Because it's real shiny. And it stands out like a sore thumb. <laughs> as you say, you know. And basically, I would, if it was me, a satin. But if you've if you got some real rough walls, I'd go with flat. Especially if you don't have a lot of traffic on the walls. But I'd put a flat paint on it. It'll hide a lot of stuff. Flat paint's my preference for ceilings. If you're painting the ceiling in your house, because you can sit and look across the ceiling and, and they're not always perfect. You'll see places, but that flat will not reflect a lot of, a lot of stuff for you. And it, it just looks better, flat, I think. And then put maybe a satin on the walls, I think you'd be happy with your paint job. All right, Keisha. All right, we're gonna clean up our brushes. Uh, if you read most of your paint buckets, will say soap and water. 90% of the time, I'd say I never use soap. <laughs> I will always take and I'll reach that thing out. Let me get one of these out here and show you. I'll, I'll run that out of the water and I'll scrub it good and get that paint out of there. And I like to really just get a hold of it like that, push it down into my hand till I see clear water running out back here. Because if you don't clean it up, next time you go to use it, it'll be hard up to right here. Because that paint that you didn't get out, that you didn't see down in there, is going to dry. And it's going to harden. And you've run a good brush. So I tell you what, something else that I like to use, we use a lot of, good coarse brush. Actually, this thing here, I'll get it out of the water, especially if you don't paint all the time, you're going to need to clean some paint off back here. <laughs> after you clean it off from up here. And you're going to have to clean these up. And I'll take this and it really, and I'll, I'll run that through my, my brush and keep running through that, wrench it again, squeeze it out, and that just helps comb that out, helps take any of that excess paint out. Those, those wire, see how they just really work through there and clean that brush up? And then after I wrench it out, I've got a great brush. And it'll be ready to go again the next time I want to paint. And if you're like most of us, we'll paint our house one summer, we may not paint it for another two years. Or long we hope it lasts that long anyway. And I know I see some faces in the crowd and you're going, I haven't painted it in years. <laughs> you know, but that's the way it goes uh, most of the time. That's one of the, the little projects we hate at home. And, and hopefully, if I've done my job right today, you're going to leave with a little knowledge that you didn't have when you got here. And I appreciate y'all coming out. and I hope I've stayed on key. I know I've stayed on time and I thank you for your attention.
Thank you so much.